My talk concerns the archaeology of psychoactive plants, an item of research which it's a long, long time I'm involved with. I'm not an archaeologist, but I study a lot of archaeology. And uh, mm, over the time, I understood that uh, mm, the task looking for psychoactive plants in archaeological context and elaborated it is not a task of archaeologists. It is a task of the specialist of psychoactive plants, the ethnobotanist specialized in intoxicant plants. This because many times archaeologists don't see psychoactive plants. They find it, but the, it is transparent for their knowledge. An example, in an, archaeologic, an, in an archaeological pit, archaeologists find plant, plant remains. They studied it. They determine the botanical names. They publish the list. And they discuss some one of these, barley, wet, pomegranate. Even if they found one seed of pomegranate, they, they discuss this. But they don't see, in their list, 2,000 of seeds of black and bay, Yoshiamus niger, which, which is an intoxicant plant. That's why it's our task to go inside the excavation report of, uh, I follow all, all over the world, the plants of all over the world, looking for psychoactive plants and elaborating this. This is a field of research on uh, archaeoethnobotany of psychoactive plants. Now, uh, to testify, to testimony, the relationship of men with an intoxicant plants in the past, we have different kinds of archaeological data. We may divide in two groups, the direct evidences and the indirect evidences. <coughs> the direct evidence are whenever we found on the grave in the archaeological site, we still find the plant. Plant remains microscopic, microscopic. Or also when still there is something of the plant, the chemicals, the alkaloids. These are direct evidence of the presence of, of the plant and of the relationship of men with this plant. Um, now I show, and, and all the other kinds of data are indirect evidence. I show one by one now through archaeological Examples. First of all, we have the material findings. When we found the piece of San Pedro near Lima uh, in a grave two years ago, or 12 plants of hemp on a China grave, or like this, this is a Terry Mummies complex. Um, um, we are in China, Gobi Desert, very dry region. <coughs> where the corpse does not putrefy, they mummify. Therefore, these are natural mummies. This is a female tattooed woman. Well, for in a span of time of 1,000 of years before our era, a Caucasian population, therefore an European population, arrived in China, arrived in the Gobi Desert, and they used to bury they are dead, putting offering of uh, mawang. Mawang is a phaedra sinica, is a strong stimulant uh, plant, bearing the so-called natural amphetamine, ephedrine. And uh, in hundreds hundreds of these bodies, there are cemeteries where all bodies, also the children, they have a pocket in the dress full of um, ephedra sinica. This is a typical example of direct evidence because there, we find the plant and we found microscopic, microscopic elements of the plant. We still may consider, thank you, as direct evidence when we don't see the plant, but with, through microscope, we still see, see microscopic elements of the plants, like phytoliths. Phytoliths are microscopic granulation of cilies inside the vegetal cells. Um, and the, 
they are very specific of the genus and many times of the species. It is very specific, like a gymson weed, Datura stramonium, that is the, just the, it's a phytolith with the three lines, with, in, with the, this shape. So very, very specific. Uh, we may find also granulation of starch, like uh, starch, for example, of anadenantera seeds, Yopo, Sebil, Cohoba, the ancient name. Um, an, interest, an interesting archaeological datum, because usually we, th we know that Yopo and Sebil seed are snuffed. But archaeology is telling us that in a span of time of 800 years before our era, they overall smoked these seeds. And this just because on the pipes and not on the snuff implements, starch of copper over these plants, have, uh, these, seed, these seeds have been found. Uh, also, this is a fatolith of corn, very specific. Well, corn is not psychoactive, but we know that uh, we may get an intoxicant, alcoholic fermented brew from corn that is chicha, like from barley, we may get a beer. Therefore, when in a, in a grave we found, for example, on a plate, an offering plate, huge quantity of these corn phytholites, this means that in the plate there were food as offering, corn food for offering. But if we found a huge quantity of phytholite corn in the, at the bottom of a bottle or other liquid container, this means that in that container, chicha, the toxican chicha, was present. We still may consider direct evidence when there are no more vegetal elements, but we still found the chemicals, the principles. We may do chemical analysis on artifacts, and here I choose as example, two examples, Maya, my examples. This is a very, fa very famous pot, wonderful, from uh, Rio Azul in Guatemala. Uh, the lid, to open the lid, have to be turned, turned it over. And this contained cacao seeds. There are no more cacao seeds, but the three chemicals, theobrobin, theophylin, and caffeine, have been found which are just the three xanthine alkaloids of Theobroma cacao. And this, these are very little, these tobacco pots, very little. We know that Maya princeps hung this here full of tobacco leaves, and in, effectively nicotine have been found inside. But here, I choose these examples because here we have not only the chemical evidence, we have also the literary evidence because these glyphs are words. And now that finally it's possible to read the Maya language, we may read here kakava, which means cacao. And we may read ma'i, which is the Mayan word for tobacco. So here we have the chemical evidence that confirm the literary evidence and the literary evidence that confirm the chemical evidence. That is, we are quite sure that inside here there were cacao seeds and tobacco leaves. Sorry, one moment. And chemical analysis. We may do chemical analysis also on the body remains the bones, the hair. This is a famous chicha de Yuyayako. Uh, she belonged to the so-called Incaic Capacocha sacrifice. Uh, the Inca people sacrifice young people, overall girl. Uh, this poor girl, 14, 14, 15 years old, has been found together with two more little child at more than 7,000 meters high on the ants. So totally frozen, very well preserved. And if you observe well, you may see the bulging cheek still here, 
because inside there is a big coca leaf bolus. No? So the coca leaf bolus, this is a plant remains, direct evidence. But archaeologists here made something more. They analyzed for drugs the hair. This is 30 centimeters more long hair. Now we know that human hair, women, men, on average, on average, they grow one centimeter by month. So they cut it, the hair, one in one centimeter long pieces. And they analyze one by one, the so-called fragmentary analysis of the hair. And in this manner, they got the history of the last 30 months of life of this poor girl. And they found in all the 30 months, cocaine and some one of its metabolites. And interesting, starting from the six months before being sacrificed, also cocaethylene has been found on the air. Cocaethylene does not exist in nature. It is formed by human body whenever we took together cocaine and alcohol. So the body mix these two molecules and produce this very intoxicating, more intoxicating than cocaine, cocaethylene. And that's why, so we know that starting from the six months before being sacrificed, they took not only in uh, cocaine effect, but they took trunk, this girl, with chicha. Uh, yes, thank you. And now we, we, we all these were direct evidence, no? with the, still the presence of the plant. And here, now I present the indirect evidence. First of all, the anthropophysical evidence. When uh, a man chew coca, indeed is not, they don't chew, but taking coca with cal for years, doing this for years, appears malformation and lesions in the mandibular bone here in this point. And very characteristic is malformation. So when in an archaeological skeleton, in those regions where coca, there is a coca use, we found this malformation, this means that when alive, this person, woman or man, he used to use coca. The same for better. In Asia, better, using better, using better, your frontal teeth staining blue. So when we see in an archaeological skeleton in that region, in those regions where better is used, the staining blues, this means the better, better use. One more, please. Another kind of indirect evidence are the paraphernalia. Paraphernalia are the instrumentation for for four things for intoxicant plants. For elaboration, transportation, conservation, and consumption. Here is example, a stone wine press, very destroyed, but indeed you may still see carved the two chambers, uh, the chamber to press the grape and the collecting chamber. No? The, you may this is a paraphernalia to elaborate wine. Uh, Roman amphora are a good example for transport and conservation of an intoxicant. Again, wine. Yes, ah, here. Uh, concern, uh, concerning the conservation of intoxicant. An, inter an interesting finding, quite totally unknown, in the Andorra. Andorra is a little, little nation in the Pyrenees between France and Spain where well, archaeologists found near a Bronze Age round circle temple, open air, near, they found a pit with five, with five pots. The analysis tell us that two, the two big pots contained a kind of beer. The other two contained a huge, huge quantity of spores of a mushroom. This is very rare to find mushrooms in archaeology. Unfortunately, it has not been possible to determine the species. And the fifth pot contained eight seeds and some fruit fragments of Datura stramonia. So it appears that this pit, in this pit, 
they were preserved and conserved the intoxicant to be used in that Bronze Age uh, stone circle tumble. But here we have one more data, important data, because it's 20 years that also in the academic literature there is this news, wrong news, that uh, no Datura species was present in the old world before Columbus. It is following this idea, Datura is only from America, only after Columbus spread in Europe, Asia, etc. But this is wrong. Just this archaeological data, and also in Romania and Hungary, they found in always Bronze Age, uh, therefore a lot before Columbus, seed of Datura Stramonium have been found. So at least the Datura Stramonium, and very likely Datura Metri in Asia, were present before, a lot before Columbus. So this has been, uh, is, is a correction that I'm doing this. Uh, and the, the most wonderful paraphernalia are those, the most useful also, are the instrument for consumption. And I used to present usually this case because it's one of the best, it's one of the more complete cases of paraphernalia. We are in Atacama, northern Chile, again a very dried region where corpses mummify. Hundreds of, um, of the body of mummies have been found, also children. And uh, many of these, 30%, also in the children, they have hung on the neck a little bag with, with inside all these instrumentation that are the instrument to snuff and hallucinogenic powder get from Seville, Anatenantra, again. Uh, we have many objects, yeah, like this. This is more for coca leaves. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, we found the, the two little bags there were inside the powder. And in two cases, the powder still have, have been found. So that's why we are sure what kind of intoxicant they used. Uh, and the famous, very famous snuff trays, because to snuff, you have to put your line in some place. No? So there's, there's snuff trays from Atacana, very carved, with many symbols. The Torres are the main invest investigator on this. And you see also a spoon there. And made mm -hmm. from Anadonantra with frequently. Yeah, also. That spoon, the spoon is to take the, the powder and to put on, on the snuff tray. But making calculation, the quantity of powder that may stay on the spoon is just equivalent to an average dosis. So that more than a spoon is a dosimeter. We see. <clears throat> and the last kind of uh, indirect evidence is the iconographic evidence. When in the two dimension or plastic three dimension artist art, we may find all the, the representation of the plant or representation of consumption of the drug or the context, the social context of consumption. This is a famous opium poppy goddess, Minoan, Minoica. Uh, it is 80 centimeter high, so very, and uh, he, on the head, uh, she has three opium poppy capsule, which is possible to detach, to insert and to detach. And uh, very interesting, the place, the origin place, because this is one of the rare, very rare case that it has been found in the original place, in a very little chapel, religious chapel, at Gazi. Gazi was one of the Minoan village. Within the house, a very little chapel, also low, um, with no door and no windows. To go inside with a chair, you had to enter through a hole. And one time inside, very low, one, two maximum people may stay inside. The devotee entered to praise. He found face of five statues, 
There is and four more at the center of this. So it has been an only on the a corner of the chap of the chapel, a brazier has been found. So it has been hypothesized that the devoted enter it and to give to pray you know, in this manner before putting some opium on the brazier. So the brazier produced smoke. That's why so little the chapel in such a way could be effective while praying the inspiration of the opium smoke. And this is a capulli. Uh, as an example, here we are not the plant. OK, this is little, very little, sitting man, drinking. But what is important is this bulging cheek, which intends inside the coca leaf bolus. This is what archaeologists call a coquero. Uh, speaking of iconographic uh, evidence, I stop one moment on this image. Over time, I've seen this image has become quite popular in psychedelic culture, books. And surprising how many times people show me tattooed this image, tattooed on the skin. And indeed, it is a wonderful image because it has a deep meaning inside. Well, this is image is mine. I decided it. And it belonged from my research in the Sahara. Uh, or you may follow to tattoo it, uh, no problem. Hmm? And you are not to pay me, huh? but uh, this is mine. Um, in the, we are in the center of Sahara, Tassili, Tassili Plateau is a mountain, 2,000 meters high, plateau, 200 kilometers for 50 kilometers in the middle of the Sahara Desert. In a period where still was water, river, lakes, woods, and the people went on the mountain, prehistoric people, for initiatory ceremonies. And on the top, on the Tassili, in the rock shelters, we found not hundreds, thousands and thousands of paintings, wonderful paintings that preserved just for the desertification process that later arrived. They are very psychedelic, fantastic. There is a Epitorial phase, the so-called the round head phase, that is that where I studied, where I found so many mushroom-like images holding, uh, um, spreading from the head of divinities, etc. But what convinced me that indeed I was in front of a representation of an ancient, very ancient magic mushroom cult. The, the most ancient, 6,000 BC, what convinced me has been a detail of this image, a detail that belonged to the so-called killer details. That is, the details that kill any interpretative doubt. And, uh, well, I not presented uh, dancing man with mask, with horn, with a mushroom-like object on the hand, and the killer detail, starting from the mushroom, two dotted lines reach the center of the head, just to represent, represent the effects of the mushroom on the head. This detail convinced me that these objects are really psychoactive mushrooms. This is one, uh, this is the best killer detail I ever found in my iconographic, prehistoric iconographic studies. Uh, some funny, sometimes in iconography we find also the, the consequence of intoxicants use, like this, like this Mayan princess that drank a lot of barche, or this Egyptian New Kingdom uh, Theban town Seven times uh, chains. These are not dead people. These are alcoholic coma people brought to bed by insurgents. Hmm? You see this? Yes. Well, now I have. I sh I, I talk to you about something else in the huge world of archaeology of of uh, psychoactive plants. I choose to talk. Well, uh, this thing. This is an interesting new data. 
Um, concerning alcohol, concerning beers, beers from graminaceous plants, from cereals, no? Berlin in the old world, and corn in the America. Now, it has been always a common idea inside and outside archaeology that firstly, men discovered how to get food from graminaceous plants. So cultivating it, transforming it in cereals as food. And only later, growing, cultivating, cultivating cereals, only later men discovered the technique of production of beers. In the last 15 years, archaeologists understood happened totally the opposite. At least in three of the region center of production of beer, two of these are the most important in the Near East and with barely in, in Mexico with uh, corn, I'm speaking of prehistoric beers, they demonstrated it happened totally the opposite. That is, originally men discovered how to get an intoxicant from graminaceous plant. And only later, 3,000 years later in China, 4,000 years later in Near East, in Mexico still is discussed how much later, only later, cultivating, cultivating for intoxicant use, they discovered that they, they could use cereals for food. And this brings us to an important consideration, that is the use of intoxicant inducing an important cultural acquisition, in this case, important alimentary acquisition, through intoxicants. This is a very interesting uh, consideration, I think. Um, one more correction, because many corrections have to be made concerning here the distillation practice, uh, distillation practice to get stronger alcoholic brew. No? Um, because if you read the, quite all the books on history of distillation, all say that prehistoric man was not able, did not have the technology to produce, for, uh, to still to the, produce distillation. And distillation started in Alexandria of Egypt, first century of our era, uh, by, by, by Greeks. This is not true. Archaeology know very well. It's the, uh, archaeological still prehistoric are quite widespread. The most ancient are of the fourth millennium, BC, from uh, Iraq and from Czech Republic. In the Bronze Age, we have more. We have still, prehistoric still, also in Mexico, Colima culture. So pre-Columbian, because usually distillation in America arrived with Columbus. No, Colima, Colima culture produces stills. And the experimental archaeology, which means to construct the identical and to, to work for, with it, have been able to demonstrate it was possible to get a 44 alcohol concentration brew, very clean, very clean from methanol, because this usually is a problem for, with distillation. So prehistoric man, yes, was able, had the, the, the technology to produce stronger alcoholic brew. Uh, this is an interesting new concerning Eleusinian mysteries. I hope you know the ergot hypothesis by Watson, Rack, Hoffman, you also? You also, Hoffman, and the ergot hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Hoffman, uh, Rack, uh, well, Watson, Rack, Pender. Uh, you also? No, no I ah, okay. It. It's a, well, the, the ergot hypothesis of Eleusinian mysteries, that is that in the visionary Kikeon, this brew, ergot was inside. And we find, we have now the first confirmation. It is in a late date, 40th century BC. Eleusinian mysteries lasted for 2,000 of years. But, and we are not in Eleusis, but we are in a Demetriac temple, the, uh, the, the goddess, Eleusinian goddess, Demeter and Persephone. 
near Girona in Spain. Now here in a cup, very likely one of the cup used to drink Kikeon, little pieces of ergot have been found. And overall, little pieces of ergot have been found in a dental calculus of a skeleton, very likely he was a hierophant, that is a priest, is an Eleusinian priest. So this is the first time we found the confirmation of Watson and Rock staples, etc. Often Watson, Rock and staples. Hypothesis. Uh, I pass through Syrian rue. Syrian rue because this plant is so, so important in these last ma uh, years. Uh, Syrian rue is, uh, is following ayahuasca in the globalization. There is a globaliz globalization of ayahuasca, and back there is the globalization of Syrian rue. Why this? Because Syrian rue seeds contain Armine and armaline, the same alkaloids of ayahuasca vine, and they contain 10 times, sometimes 20 times more than uh, ayahuasca vine. That's why it's spreading in, uh, in the uh, ayahuasca and anahuasca ceremonies, etc. Well, this is a very important plant. Surely, Pegano Marmala has a big, big old world history. Unfortunately, we know only now only little pieces of this Eurasian plant. But sure, it has a very important relationship with uh, old, old world men. Archaeologists speak of speak as of seven thousands of relationship at least of men with Syrian rule. Here I put the most ancient findings. And we have also an interesting iconographic representation of Pegano Marmala in the Giroth Chlorite Cup, wonderful cup from Mesopotamia, third millennium uh, BC. Uh, it is, there is represented the classic Mesopotamian scheme of two animals with a tree of life in the middle. Uh, indeed, originally is the two animals eating the tree of life in the middle. And in this case, the tree of life has been determined by archaeologists as Paganum armala. And me too, I agree with the five petals. This could be effective Paganum armala. Now, I present a list. This for the old world, the next for the new world plants. This is a list. Uh, to, write, to write this, I spent some minutes to elaborate this. I spent some years. Um, I put the oldest dates. These are not the dates, attention, of the beginning of the relationship of man with these plants. Maybe the origin is, uh, is earlier. These are the dates that so far archaeology has been able to demonstrate through direct or indirect evidences. Uh, many of these could be discussed, I know, overall concerning hemp. The five people doing research now on archaeology of hemp, we could stay one day long to discuss, and we don't arrive to, a, to agree for the date. I put this Japan date, so, so in this moment. Uh, I show you also this plant, both on a disticker, South Africa, because South Africa as a big complex of psychoactive plants. More than 120 psychoactive plants are still used by South African tribes, ethnies. But we know very, it, it is a complex still not studied. One of the most important hallucinogenic, very visionary plant is Bofone distica. And it is demonstrated its importance by archaeology. Four sons are here of South African people using, using Bofone distica. I think this plant will, uh, will reach, in the future, a globalization, or will reach the psychedelic culture, also this South African plant. Uh, the next concerns the New World plants. San Pedro is the first. More than 10,000 of relationship of men win with San Pedro. Uh, you see, Datura Stramonio, only 300 
of our era. That is, so far, the most ancient archaeological data concerning Datura belong to Europe, not to the Americas. But I, conclude, I want to conclude with another list, the list of the plants that are not present here. We have no archaeological data so far for these plants. We have no credible archaeological data. Because my work is not only to take archaeological data, I, is to filter, because fakes I, I are everywhere also in archaeology. We have very famous archaeological fakes just concerning uh, intoxicant plants. For example, the cocaine, hemp, uh, Egyptian mummies, totally fake. No? This. Well, uh, a word for ayahuasca. Ayahuasca brew, brew, but also banisteriopsis. Because sometimes the media spread like two months ago, I think, no? this pocket found in Bolivia with many drugs inside, and supposedly also ayahuasca. But these are not credible. Uh, data. Also, the presence of Armin, Armin in, two, in two Chilean mummies uh, and uh, the archaeology ayahuasca. No, this is a, a totally fake. Fakes. Based of, on wrong conclusion. I have no time to explain why, but the fact is also for ayahuasca, so far we have no credible archaeological data. And I belong to the little group of researchers that in these last years is starting to suspect a recent discovery of ayahuasca. Three, four hundred of years, no more. Usually you see, you see 5,000 years uh, old ayahuasca. No, no. Uh, it is a suspect. We still are not sure. We are waiting for more archaeological data, but not for the lack of not only for the lack of archaeological data, also through ethnomusicological, uh, ethnohistorical data are bringing us to understand. So we, we, we suspect the ayahuasca, but this is normal. That is, uh, why the lack of this, uh, for this plant? Uh, one explanation could be, well, archaeologists so far have not found it, but maybe one day we'll find something. But another explanation, at least for some one of these plants, could be that simply they have been discovered recently. Because men follow to discover psychoactive plants and souls. Um, baby Hawaiian wood roads, no? baby Hawaiian wood road seeds, they are hallucinogenic. We discovered this not through ethnography. We discovered it in the laboratories. So we still follow to discover hallucinogenic plants, psychoactive plants. It is not the case that in a very, very ancient time we discovered psychoactive plants and after we used. No. Psychoactive plants have been discovered, have been forgotten sometimes, have been rediscovered as we Western, uh, we are rediscovering many of these plants, and sometimes happens that men still discover new intoxicant plants, or blue, like, likely, ayahuasca. Uh, well, I, I stop here. Uh, have you some questions? Not complicated too much. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>